Hey, and welcome back to my series on creating a responsive website from scratch. In today's video, we're going to be turning this up here into this right here. So in the previous video, we uh, put all of our HTML together. We got everything on the page. In this video, I'm going to be looking at turning this part right up here at the top to look something like this, and we will be making it fully responsive. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So the only thing I've done uh, since we left off on the last video is I have imported my Google Fonts in here and the font I'm using is called Railway. So you could look that up on Google Fonts. And in my design I used uh, the 300, 400, 700 and 900 weights which is light, the normal bold and the heavier black or whatever the, the thickest one is. So let's just jump right into this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is let's go to our body and there's a few basic things I want to do on here. Let's get rid of our margin. So a margin of zero and our font family. Everything on the site is the same, which was uh, rail railway and saw serif will be fine. There we go. We can see that it did update there. Let me just move that over a nudge. There we go. And uh, the one other thing I'm going to do here is uh, do a text align center. If I look at my design, everything on the mobile view is center align text. Oh, this isn't, but everything else is. So for the most part, we're looking at some center aligning. So I'm going to put that as my default on there for the for now on my body. Oh, and I did forget one thing. There we go. OK, uh, and I did forget one thing uh, that I do on all my sites. Uh, I'm going to put a star here, which is going to select everything and choose my uh, border box, not border box, box sizing, box sizing, border box. Um, if you don't know what this does, it just makes padding a million times easier to deal with because in padding doesn't add to the total size of something. Uh, the box size is, the margins are outside of the size, but say something has a width of 300 and you add padding, the width will be 300, including the padding. It's wonderful. So if you've never used border box, please try it out. You'll be very, very happy you did. And this should be the default, but of course it's not. Now we can jump right away into our next part. So in my, whoops, sorry, in my CSS, I do like to use a lot of comments. So this will be my header. And in my header, we have my logo, which doesn't we don't need to do too much with. Uh, my header will be a position. Uh, I always do that when I put a comment at the top. I forget to make my selector after. So my header will be a position absolute. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of uh, margin top on it of say uh, 1m. Let's see what that looks like though. Um, actually, I'm going to take this off until I've fixed other stuff on there. Uh, let's just make it a comment. I'm not doing too good with my comments today either. Uh, let's just turn that into a nice little geez. There we go. Uh, I think that, yeah, my spacing there looks okay. Uh, margin top, that should be fine. And I'm going to be going with all M's and REMs in this design. For font sizes and padding and margin, I've been pretty good with that. But uh, for actual widths of things, I tend to always go to pixel values. So I'm going to be pushing myself to focus on using M's and REMs for everything on here. I'm going to not put in a pixel value for anything. And let's see how that goes. And then we want my nav. So my nav itself, I don't think I need to do anything for it for now, but my UL, uh, my margin is zero, my padding is zero, and my list style is none. Then I need to uh, come down and do my nav li, Displ uh, display, uh, yeah, it is display, display inline block which will put them in a line when that updates. It's updating really slowly for some reason. So I had a small problem with my recording. I lost part of what I recorded. I don't know quite what happened, but that's okay. Uh, I've gone back in time and set this up. I'm pretty sure exactly where I left off. I'm just sort of doing the middle section right now. Um, 
So just if anything was kind of out of place, that might be why. Uh, so with our UL set up properly, we now want to come into our nav li. So for my list items, uh, there's not too much I need to do here. Just do a nice little display inline block as well as a margin. Uh, let's just actually, let's start with the inline block. Just there we go. We can see them in a line and then a margin of, let's try one M. And actually that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And now let's jump down to our nav A. So our links in our nav. There's a few things I want to do here. Uh, they're bold in my design, so a font weight I think would be not 800, 900. We want to do a text declaration of none to get rid of that underline. That looks nice. I'm going to do a text transform uppercase. We need to also change the font size. Looks a little bit big. Font size point seven. Oh, that's way too small. Point eight. That looks better. Now they look a little bit, a little bit close together. But I think what I'm going to do. Let's just open up. Um. Maybe the font size is too small. I think I'm going to keep it like that. Um, but there's a bit more space between them here than I have here. And I think what I'm going to do is use a little bit of padding. And let's just go with a padding of 0.75m. Mm, what about just 0 0.5? 0 0.5 looks pretty good. And by putting padding on it, um, we're looking mobile, and they're not the biggest I, well, links in the world. So let's just give this a background, background of pink. Oops. Uh, so that whole pink area is clickable. So if I didn't have my padding, obviously I have to click right on the word. And with that padding, it gives me a little bit more spacing, but more importantly is it's making a bigger clickable area. On the computer, that's not such a big deal, but most people are mobile these days. We're thinking mobile first. And if we have our big fingers or we're using our thumb to click on something, it makes it just a little bit easier if we're actually making the clickable area a little bit bigger. So I wouldn't do that on all my links, but for something like that, that we can hide away by you know, not actually having a background on it, it can be pretty good. Now I also need to come in here and change the, the color of these to white. Before I do that, let's move down a little bit and set up my hero area so we have a background that we can work with. Um, so actually, let's just come up and copy that. Home hero. And let's jump into that. There's not a lot I don't think we need to do for this actually. Uh, so we need our background, uh, background image, URL, and it's in my Im whoops in my image folder, and hero bg .jpeg. Ah, there we go, great. So we can see that coming in. Uh, now I want to also give this a bit of padding. So let's come in and just do a padding of. Let's we'll start with ten top and bottom, nothing on the left and right. And that looks okay. Now, obviously we need this to actually be un, you know, this all here should be on top of that. And that's where that position absolute comes back into play. So let's go and do that. And perfect. Uh, so now this is on top of my picture. Now, one thing the position absolute does is it doesn't have it stretch the whole size anymore. It makes it shrink down. So uh, the easiest way to get over that is just left zero, right zero, or I guess I could just put width to 100% as well. Now I can come in and change my link colors as well. There we go. We have my link colors. And if I'm going to be giving my links a color, I'm also going to give them a hover. And if I'm giving something a hover, I'm also going to give it a focus. Uh, color, let's just go with DDD. And yeah, that looks pretty good. It's a really, really subtle, but we don't need much. I just want that nice little subtle effect. I'm also going to come in here and do an uh, inspect element and set this up for my iPhone. 
Oh, whoops, and I forgot completely about this. Uh, my images right now are way too big. They're massive, and it's causing this to sort of zoom out to be able to fit my image properly. So something, if you're doing responsive websites, that you'll want to do all the time. Select all of your images and change the width, whoop, not width, the max width to 100%. So the biggest they can get is the size of their container, and just to be safe, we'll set the height to auto. Ah, that looks better. And now my image is shrunk down to fit their parent. So I need to make a few changes to here, and I'm gonna come up to here, and I haven't done this yet, but we need a typography section. Uh, type, type, typography. Ah, there we go. Uh, so my typography, I will be doing some other ones, but the only one I need so far is my title. It's a little small right now. Um, actually, let's just go down to the header for a second. Not the header, the section. Home hero. Uh, I don't have a container in here. Oh, geez, I forgot to put containers when I did my HTML, didn't I? A container. I'm gonna throw a container inside of there just to be safe. Uh, I think that makes more sense. Home hero. Uh, let's just do a container in here. And this is. I, I tend to forget to do containers until it's at this stage a lot of the time. Uh, this is not my typography. Something I use a lot. I tend to keep these up at the top. So my container, just for mobile purposes, will have a width of 95% and margin zero auto. And there we go, it just stops the text from actually touching the side of the screen. So that looks a little bit nicer. Um, and I just scrolled down, but I still want to be here. Title. My title will be font size of no, 4M. That might be too big. Yeah, that's a uh, 2.5 maybe. That's not too bad actually. That would be a pretty good font size. Is it? Yeah, I like that. And uh, then I have, actually that's all I need for there. And then my dot title span would be a font weight of 300. Uh, I want to also do a display block on this, just so it's always on its own line. And it looks a little bit too big. Uh, let's just jump back here for a second. I definitely have a smaller font size on that. And this is where M's are amazing. So my font size, uh, if I did, you know, by default it's one. So one, it won't change at all. If I made this two, it's going to become twice as big as this one. If I did 0.5, it's gonna be half of that size. So it makes it really easy to put things in relation to each other. 0 0.8, 0.85, 0 0.9. I like that better. And obviously my color is off, but I'm gonna do my color just on here. Uh, color FFF for white. That looks pretty good. Let's just jump back to Photoshop for a second. Um, I know here I'd had it on one line and then now it's falling on, on more lines than, but that's okay. I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with everything there actually. Um, I just have my button to finish up. So again, I'm going to jump back up to my typography. My buttons come in sort of a subsection, buttons. And I have my dot button. So dot button my class of button and this will have a font size definitely needs to be bigger um, let's say 1.5 rem that looks pretty good uh, text decoration should be none my text transformation text transform uppercase so uh, all of my buttons are going to have a border they have that sort of the ghost style. So uh, let's just do a border width of two pixels, a border style of solid. And the advantage of doing this, so I have my border. Uh, when I do my different ones, I just have to worry about changing the border color. 
and even do I need to worry about changing the border color? It's just going to follow the font color. I might not even have to. We'll see as we go through. Uh, border width of two pixels. That's good. That's good. Now I just need a bit of padding. Uh, so it's a little padding. Top and bottom 0.5m. Left and right 1.5m. That's not terrible, actually. 1.75. That's better. And uh, I did forget display inline block. And it's just so um, if I don't do the display inline block, the padding doesn't actually add to the height of my whole thing. So if you didn't have room here, they would sort of merge into each other. It's kind of weird. Um, so the inline block just makes sure things work properly. Uh, and now I need to change. It looks a little bit big, actually. No, does that look a bit big? It's pretty big here, but I'm just thinking it's massive compared to everything. I'm going to change this to the font size like 1.1. I'm just looking at like the balance of the screen right now. If that was bigger, I think it would have been really a bit too much. And my title is going to get margin bottom 1.5 M's. Yeah, just to create a bit more space there. I think that looks nicer. And then my button accent will have a color of, uh, let's see if a 00FFC6. And actually, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. It's a nice balance. Yeah. Um, the smaller size, it's still really grabbing our attention with that bright, bright green. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then let's come down. Uh, I, if I have a button, I do want to have a button accent hover. And if I have the hover, I do also want to do a button accent focus. And uh, all I'm going to change here, let's change my background to uh, the 00FFC6 and my font will have to change colors. Color will be uh, 23, 23, 23, which is going to be the same dark color uh, that I have uh, here and, and elsewhere, just so it's the same everywhere. Um, so if I, there we go. Oh, the only problem with that is my border color changes too because it's changing with the font uh, color and border color. I might as well just set my border color here. So it's always the same. Uh, my border color will not be the same as my text. My border color will just always be the screen color. That looks better. Yeah, definitely. And now we need to worry about this, what it's going to look like on the big screen. So let's get out of our responsive view and let's actually shove this over a little bit and what I wanted to do with the big screen is I want this area being a lot bigger so the first thing I'm going to do is come into here and add a media query so add media and uh, we're going to go with a min width and this is where things might change width of uh, I said I don't want to have any pixel values and Figuring out widths overall is a bit of a challenge for me when it comes to using M's and REMs still. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, when I get to, uh, let's just turn this back on and go to the responsive, uh, responsive. So when I'm getting to about 800 pixels-ish, you know, 800 exactly, would be 50, um, 50 rems because 50 times 16 is 800. Uh, so I think I want to go a little bit bigger than that because I think 800, it, it's looking pretty good at 800, but when I get to a bit bigger, like 900, I don't know, let's just try 55. Uh, minimum width of 55 rems. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's go with dot title, dot title. I am going all over. There we go. Uh, font size of, um, 
don't know if this time I want to get quite a bit bigger for too big too big for that screen size for sure uh, for three let's just see how that that's not bad and I might want it to get even bigger at bigger screen sizes let's just see yeah I would actually oh it's like 900 am I at 900 when I'm switching it's like 8 880 oh that makes sense yeah 880 uh, so at 880 I'm changing from there to there what I think I'm actually going to do is make this 60 and change this up to 4 4 might still be a bit too big um, let's just see yeah, actually I'm gonna leave let's make it a little bit better smaller 3.7 yeah it looks better to me that's uh, much better okay so I like that now there's a few other things I want to do this has to have some floats going on uh, so let's just copy that and when I do my media queries I have a tendency to keep them all uh, just grouped together um, it makes my life a lot easier so at the end of my navigation I'm putting in my nav media queries and at the end of my typography I put in all my typography ones and stuff like that um, so what I want to do at this is and I can probably do this at a smaller screen size we'll stick it at the same one for now though just to have one breakpoint and um, that means my dot logo will float left and my uh, nav will float right. Let's see. Whoops, I don't want that actually touching the side there though. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, except I don't want that touching the side. So the easiest thing for that would just be my header has uh, margin, margin top. Let's just do a margin of 1m top. I'll just do 1m on all sides so I have 1m you know the margin is the same all the way around and then it's that's perfect so that makes sense to me and it sticks to, oh and I'm just realizing now I forgot uh, I see my backgrounds having some issues which I forgot to look at uh, I'm all over the place here <laughs> section will be down a bit lower uh, background image I need my background size to be cover and I want my background position to be center ah that looks better there we go so my my picture is not tiling which is a bad thing to happen okay uh, so we're getting there I'm gonna close my inspect element for now though uh, because I don't when I'm at a big screen size like this I want this to take up a lot more room I think at the smaller screen sizes it looks fine but at the bigger screen size uh, what I want it to do is uh, so we're gonna come right here at media min width of uh, I think we're doing 60 rems it's going to have a height height and I always do this uh, home hero will have a height of 100 viewport height so it's going to take up the whole space and then the next one will be right below so uh, having a viewport height it just means that you know even if I'm here scroll down and it's stopping the, so the viewport height it's it's the height of this is matching that but what I also want to do is come and give it a bit of padding top of say 40 uh, I think 50 would be too much yeah because I want this to be pretty much in the middle of my screen and if it's 50 it's starting at the middle so it's all offset uh, what would 35 it's pretty good actually <laughs> I was worried that would be too much uh, too short but pretty happy with that and then see our work see now my button could probably be a bit bigger so let's just run up whoop, let's just scroll up here to my buttons 
Um, and I'm gonna do one. No, we'll just stay consistent. At media. Uh, min width 60 rem and I want to do a my button font size is 1.5 it's gonna get a lot bigger there we go um, so my padding by being in M's again just to get back on this is proportional to the font size so if the font size gets bigger my padding gets bigger with it so at the small one I have small the padding is smaller and then when my font gets bigger that gets bigger and that looks pretty good and I think I am done with this part of it um, my navigations there my navigation was working good at all screen sizes yeah, it's. I mean, it's not perfect the way that's breaking, but uh, I'd rather that because this is bold and that's not bold, it looks a little nicer. So that span being block, and especially there, if four was up here, would look really weird. So I think that that is the best solution. And then once we get to the bigger screen size, bang, it really gets big. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, that's done. We're we're. This section is completely finished. We've taken our header and our first section, and I think it's looking really nice. As usual, if you have any questions at all, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. I will reply to all the comments I get. And uh, if you like the video, please, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed so you can follow along with this series and not miss any of the videos so you can see how I do the whole website. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.